All right, ladies and gentlemen, racism, racism everywhere. We're gonna talk about that yet again, and we're gonna talk about a controversial idea of positive and negative racism. Um, obviously, there's positive and negative justice um, that's spoken about in political theory, but tonight, we're gonna to try and attempt to invent new political theories here uh, on the report from Tiger Mountain, because that's what we do. We're free thinkers. Stick around and listen. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is, uh, we're going to talk tonight about the idea of positive and negative racism and people say, how could you possibly have such a thing as positive racism? Well, you know, I mean, this is what you, you when you talk about identity politics, um, you know, obviously, and let's, let's just say this at the out front, the return of identity politics that we've seen in the last, you know, eight to, you know, 10 years or whatever in Western civilization is essentially the, uh, the fault of the left. I, I believe after Occupy Wall Street, the left was so demoralized at the abject failure of, you know, the way that they couldn't even use a basically a bullhorn and they had to come up with that awful people's mic where they all parrot each other. It was a kind of way that the, that the globalist elite were humiliating the, 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 the old left. And after that, the, 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 the old, well, the left kind of, you know, was demoralized. It was demoralized for about a year or two. And then after that, this new identity politics, I don't know who first injected it in. Obviously, it had been around before. It can be tied, you know, back to, um, you know, philosophers like Foucault and Derrida and people like this, some postmodern philosophers that Jordan Peterson criticizes. But, you know, anyway, identity politics became a real thing uh, at least the last eight to six years on the new left. And also, in a way, it re-energized um, the, well, you know, the alt-right, the new right, um, the dissident right, the affirmative right, whatever you want to call it, um, the new right that we see around us at the moment. Um, because in a sense, you know, once you re-energize uh, identity politics in general, you can't, you know, say, well, there's a certain kind of identity politics like, say, black identity politics or Jewish identity politics or uh, Asian identity politics that we approve of, but there's another, there's another kind we don't. I mean, obviously, that's an incredible hypocrisy that's constantly... Because every form of minority... Um, politics, identity politics on the planet is basically, um, pardon the pun, kosher, um, except for white identity politics. That's the one that's banned or verboten, right? You know, so I mean, that, that for one is deeply hypocritical, but I wanted to come up with the idea that there's a kind of, there's a way to express a kind of positive um, feeling about one's uh, ethnic identity that, that's positive. I mean, you know, I mean, I've never had a problem with black people who are, who are like, you know, proud to be black, you know, or, or, or people from the Asian community who are proud to be Asian, you know, in the sense that they like to point out various things about their communities that are, that are positive, various contributions. And all communities, all racial communities and ethnic communities have made contributions. There's the Jewish pride. And we're all familiar with these narratives in our media, and it's always you know, strongly supported by our media. This is what I would call positive racism in the sense that they, they are saying there are things of value about these communities and I would agree with a lot of it you know but I don't think they can exclude you know European um, and white uh, identity politics from this they have to be able to allow us to say well there are many great contributions um, that European identity politics has made so I would call that kind of uh, definition positive racism in a way like it um, but where it would go to, over to what I call negative is when um, you see the idea of supremacy coming in, where the I so for example within the black community you would see the idea of black supremacy, that blacks are not equal or th there's not, you know, they go beyond the point of the, we're proud of our community to the point of no, we're superior. And you see that happening with Black Lives Matter and obviously that's when the violence breaks out, that's when, you know, the, the chaos begins. And you see it also within, um, say, the Jewish community. You see, um, uh, this happening uh, in relation to Zionism sometimes and, and, and the idea of Jewish supremacy, the idea that anyone who's not Jewish is worthless. And, you know, there's a narrative of that that's been going on with the Jewish community for thousands, a couple of thousand years at least. And you see that within the Asian community, possibly out of China at the moment with this kind of, you know, rising China. So this is, this is negative racism when the idea of supremacy. And I guess, you know, you would say, I would say that, you know, obviously that, because I like to be consistent, when you have white, the idea of white supremacy, the idea that white people are superior to everybody. To me, I don't necessarily have a huge problem with identity politics. I'm okay to vibe with it, and I'm interested in what I call the positive side of it, that each community has its right to express um, a positive self-image, and that should include white Europeans. So, you know, it will include the phrase, it's okay to be white, because it's, it's absolutely okay. That's a phrase like, you know, black pride or whatever. It's just the same kind of thing. 
But, you know, I think when we cross over into the supremacy element, uh, that's when various problems begin. So, um, you know, I just wanted to raise that today and, um, you know, to kind of bring up that kind of epistemological difference. And um, I think, you know, our society should get more relaxed about people expressing what I would call positive racism or positive uh, images of various ethnic communities, including the, uh, white Europeans communities in our own countries. That should be fine. But when they cross over into the negative element where whatever community is, whether it be black, Jewish, or I mean, you say, even look at the Arab world, you, you see the, there's uh, uh, Arab or Islamic um, superiority or supremacy. That's a problem. And that's obviously something that's, um, you know, showing with like uh, terrorism um, appearing everywhere and uh, radical Islamic terrorism, which is a huge problem, obviously, in France and many other countries, including our own. So, you know, this is where um, I think, um, you know, th there is a clear kind of schism and there's a clear kind of break. And it's usually pretty obvious um, when someone's expressing ideas that are kind of uh, what I would call uh, negative and poisonous and some that are positive and that we should relax about people who express ideas that are positive and that, you know, if we wish to condemn people, uh, we can do so when they express ideas of extreme um, supremacy. So that's all I wanted to say on the report from Tiger Mountain. Thank you very much.